about 10 minutes away from the next point, which is Staunton's Family Forge in, I want to say Ballantober, but I don't think that's right. Uh, can't remember the name of the, the village. Um, and there's not really much I can say about this that Lucky Luke hasn't already said. It was a forge, it's an Irish photo rally point. It's a, a forge. I think it's back as a working forge now. It was owned by the Stauntons, they were the local uh, blacksmiths in the area. And I kind of covered most of the other kind of information about forges and blacksmiths and their role in Irish society and all that kind of crack in other videos about Broaders Family Forge and places like that. The last horse was shod in this forge in 1960 and the gentleman who was the last working blacksmith in it um, only died in 1980. Uh, John Costello, Costello, John Staunton, I think, was the chap's name. And what's cool about this, I suppose, was most noteworthy about this particular photo rally point is it was um, brought back from the the brink of destruction in 1999 by a false scheme. So basically, false workers were put to work on it. Uh, to restore it and to rebuild it and bring it back to its former glory and because this forge was still a working forge up until 1960 many of the tools that are in it are actually working tools from the forge uh, the, the local community was um, given the, the site of the forge by the Staunton family and they, they rebuilt it the force scheme rebuilt it and it's now a working forge and it has an actual bellows in it now the bellows that's in it is not the original bellows that would have been in the forge well I've discussed we've discussed um, the function of the the bellows and how important it was in other in other videos But uh, this is, I don't know if we'll be able to get in to see it, the inside of it. Hopefully, we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, that's enough talk about it until we get there. I think it's brought me a, a choice direction. Well, you see, she always gets me where I need to go eventually. Hey, horsies. Although it's telling me now that this is it, and this clearly is fucking not it. There it is. I think. Yeah. Ah, that's the heritage cottage. That's the wrong thing. This is it. You can kind of see some of the stuff inside. It's, pretty, it's all locked up. I wonder if it doesn't be open at any time. South Mayo Leader Company. I hope I don't get in trouble for this jumping walls and breaking and entering again. These are all kind of examples of the implements that the the blacksmith would have had to make. So he would have been making these kind of shears for a plough. 
That would have been a horse drawn plough. This is a sewing machine. No, it's not. It's a mowing machine. Sorry, completely wrong. A mowing machine. Finger bear mower there, and it was horse drawn. She's missing the the shaft up the middle. My grandfather has a fully restored and working one of those in a shed at home. This is pretty cool. If you were there for, I'd say if you were there for a week now, you wouldn't figure out what that is. That's a concrete block maker. And the house I was born was built by my, by my grandfather and his brother. And they made every single block for it using one of those. You mix up your sand and cement. Unless she's seized. You fill it in there. You put it down. You jiggle it around with this. Just kind of aerate it. And let it sit and then you strike it. This. What does that do actually? No, it does that. Yeah. That lifts the bottom up, lifts the block up so you can catch it. Lift it out. And they made every single block by hand for the house. And we have one of them at home. We used to have one of these. It's another plough. Would you know what that is? But you wouldn't. That is... I'm going to bluff it here and say that's a potato picker. You see that thing runs up along the, the furrow. Oh, sorry, that runs up along the drill. And this is being spun by the movement of the wheels rolling. And it's throwing out the spuds to one side or the other. I have no idea what that is. Looks like it's a plough turned upside down. I could be wrong. These are all different ploughs. And this thing. This thing. What in the fuck is this? Oh, hold on. <sighs> An eight mule team chore by line. Waterloo, Iowa. The hell does it actually do? It's a pump. Of, is it a water pump? No idea. Anywho, that's it. Better go and uh, take a ramble around the back actually, just while we're here, and then we'll get out of here. Right. Detached cottage, no? That's cool. Right. Time to get out of here. Okay. Anybody tell me where we are? Anybody paying attention in the last video? What part of the country are we in now? If you said Donegal, you are wrong. If you said Kerry, you are wrong. If you said Sligo, well done, you were paying attention in the last video. So we left, um, oh geez, where's the last place we left? Uh, Staunton's Forge, we made our way to Castle Bar, and up to Sligo, and we're on our way to Bundoran now, it's half seven in the evening. So we're gonna get to Bundoran and get somewhere to stay for the night. And in the morning, we're going to take care of the two photo rally points that are near Bundoran. And I have no idea what those are, but uh, it'll be fine. We'll figure it out in the morning. Just need to get somewhere to bed down and uh, get a good night's sleep. So, excuse me. So we will leave it there for now and I will see you in the morning. This where you for lads. Welcome back to the next morning. A lovely stay in Bundorn. Lovely uh, guest house. 
did the job nice and comfortable good bed where no oh, jesus look at this continuous white line dipshit anywho uh this morning we are going to get two points before we head back to tullamore uh we're going to get the lost village in mullahair mullagar not sure how to pronounce that and we're going to try to guess uh, the pebble in the pond sofa now the pebble in the pond sofa I can find no information about online so we're just gonna have to go on a little adventure find that and shit forgot to click this thing uh, go on a little adventure to Belique and find this pebble in the pond and see what it's about um, and last night I did do a little bit of research about the um, the lost village. Unfortunately, I also drank some whiskey last night. And historical and geographical research, after substantial amounts of fine Irish whiskey, is not the best recipe for good results. But we're about uh, ten minutes away from this place, so. Uh, what I can remember, it has, and uh, this is all very hazy, it has something to do with uh, Lord Mountbatten, who was uh, killed by the IRA in, I think, 1979. I'm not really sure. And Mountbatten was, he owned the, uh, the castle up here. And I think when this castle was built originally, and when it was, I don't know, but uh, a lot of these, this last village, the houses that were in this village were um, basically demolished um, so that this castle could be built. Uh, the other thing is, there's, now, there's a, a monument there, it's a sundial, and it's a monument to a local man who died in the 60s. I want to say Terry something, but I could be, I could be wrong and this was a man who lived in a house close to where this point is where this monument to the lost villages and he died in the 1960s and he died of he was found in a ditch near his home uh, having died of hypothermia very sad end and he lived alone in the the house that's near the uh the monument and when when they when they entered into his house after he was found dead they found that every single stick of furniture in his house had been burned to keep warm it was a very very sad story uh, even parts of his bed he was down that low that he had started to burn parts of his bed to try to keep himself warm um, it's just a, a heartbreaking story of just of, of poverty and pride I suppose not wanting anybody to know how badly stuck you are you know and it's it's kind of relevant to today in terms of homelessness and the hot topic of, of Irish culture today is the housing crisis and the homeless crisis and it's just a kind of a reminder of how bad things can get without anyone realizing but as i said all of this is being recalled through a misty haze of writer's tears whiskey so uh disclaimer time this is not in any way 100% accurate, true, or infallible fact. So, Google this for yourself, people. Look at this for a day. I think that might be the castle. That was the home of Lord Mountbatten, but I'm not sure. It's an impressive structure up there, anyway, on the top of the hill. That's where Lord Mountbatten used to live. 
He was the uncle of Prince Charles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oops, that's the turn we want. Yeah, I don't know what that place is called. Some sight, isn't it? Photo bomb. Now, there. That's it. Yeah, we'll go down there and turn around. Gorgeous, isn't it? I think we'll do a drone here, will we? Right, okay. See if we can do a turnabout with a pillion. Oh, the answer is no. Not at any degree of... <sighs> you alright? Wow, look at that. Right, this is the Mullock Moor or Mullock Yar monument. Uh, Alright, these were the names of the heads of the household who were evicted uh, over that, right, may as well make this kind of a logical narrative. That house up there is Freddy's Cottage and the man who lived there is the man I was talking about earlier who died in 1960. Uh, he lived alone and he'd burned most of his furniture in an attempt to keep warm. Behind his house there is Classy Vaughan which is the the uh, castle that um, Lord Mountbatten lived in it was his summer home and the forgotten village is just there behind Freddy's cottage there was I think nine households that were built along there that cottage there is a gate cottage to the domain but the other cottages and households when Classy Bourne, I think it was 1845 was being built by Lord Palmerston uh, he was putting pressure on the, the residents to um, to quit their tenancy and get out of there essentially because it was ruining his view of the, the coastline to have these eight houses uh, in his line of sight of the the sea so he was uh, they were being put under pressure to to quit and when Classy Bourne was finally finished they um, the Ordnance Survey map shows no sign of the, the households at all. Um, the heads of the households were recorded in the census. And those are the names that are on the sundial there. This is cool.
Have a look at that. That's some view to have, isn't it? That's some view. Okay, so the GoPro camera is almost out of battery, of course. We're five minutes away from this point, uh, which is the Pebble in the Pond sofa. And as I said earlier, I have no information about this. I could find nothing about it on, uh, online. So we're just gonna have to go and look at it and see what it is. See if we can figure out what it's all about. Oh, we're crossing the border. That's interesting now. There's a little bit of a pre-Brexit foreshadowing. The sat the sat nav is telling me I'm crossing a border in 700 meters. Well, Susie is getting ready for Brexit anyway. The remote battery is nearly dead though, so I may put that charging. Uh, I wish you hadn't asked me that because I don't know what county is Enniskillen in. Yes, you're right. I have to edit that out. So we're heading to Belique now, which is in Fermanagh. Okay. See? Sounds like I know what I'm talking about. And now we're not in Donegal. Down here somewhere, I think. There it is, just past it. Oh, tricky, tricky, tricky. Ah, oh, there it is. And there it is. Yeah, that's perfect. <sighs> no. <sighs> that's it. <sighs> oh. Sofa was carved. This is not a sofa. This is bloody realistic. Carved as, carved as part of the Way We Were Our Will project by Dublin artist Stephen Burke. From stone donated to the village by McKeown Stone Kilkenny. Sofa represents the way we are. Aspect of the project. The inviting, comfortable home you welcome you receive when visiting or returning to the village. Contained within the sofa are two time capsules, one containing history, stories and photos of the village, the way we were, the others, the dreams and wishes and inventions of our primary school children, the way we will be. Let's hope that the time capsule will be reopened in 2058. That's cool, isn't it? It is? Alright, talk to you in a minute. So that is the Pebble in the Pond sofa that we just visited there in Belik. And it's a pretty cool thing. It's it's really, really well carved, really, really real kind of realistic looking. Um, and it contains two time capsules, one from the past and one for the future. It's a very, very cool uh, concept. Um, so now we are on our way back. Heading for Carrick and Shannon now. Stop and get a bite to eat, and then we'll burst on for the Midlands and home. Uh, I have to say I'm supremely impressed with Little Miss Wacky. We've done 155 miles since we stopped for petrol yesterday. 
in the little pub in Mam. I think we did 111 before that and that only counted from Galway so somebody else do the maths for me 155 so far 255 265 plus whatever it took to get to Galway so it's she's gone over by the time we get home she'll be gone well over 300 350 miles in two days and this from a lady who's not uh, not used to long trips on the bike so hats off to little Miss Wacky for that one and it's, I have to say it's been an absolute pleasure having her as a pillion because you would not know she was there you can lean into bends and there's no shifting of weight there's no sudden jerky movements there's no oh dear he's leaning over I don't want to lean over that far I lean the opposite direction kind of novice pillion shenanigans that can be going on when you've got someone on the back that is not used to it she's not used to it by any stretch of the imagination but she's very very um, very very easy to carry on the back which is important because I'm also carrying two panniers fully loaded and two roll bags rock strapped down onto the back so there's a lot of weight on the bike now for this spin but anyway we're going to leave it there because uh, just really only interested in getting home now there's not much to see on the way home so I'm going to try and find an opportune moment now to actually switch off things maybe not in the middle of oh wow look at that that is stunning oh jeez this is a problem with Ireland you know that You're midway through a bend and you get distracted by a stunning view Anywho, we will leave it there. Thanks for watching. Um, I think I've got five iron butt photo rally points left to collect. And I don't know if I had 10 or 12 photo rally ones, I'm not really sure. But uh, that is stunning. Right, we'll leave it there, guys. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share, comments, etc. etc. And I will see you in the next one. Slong a fall.